Here, I'm Josh Menon, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a little tutorial on the basics of guitar playing. And really, this video is a way for possibly to inspire you to pick up a guitar, or maybe it's the first ever guitar video you're going to be watching that's going to help you to grow in the near future. Now, let me give you a little rundown on what my Music with Motive channel is really about. So, the Music with Motive channel is going to feature a lot more videos that are in depth tutorials or beginner lessons to more advanced techniques and also feature a lot more covers and music videos that would help bring the music community together and hopefully in the near future I can raise money through the channel and through support on the social media follow at music w motive to help raise money and donate a hundred percent of the profits to the hungry for music charity Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the different type of guitars you might encounter. So the first guitar I'm going to talk about is the standard acoustic guitar. So the standard acoustic guitar for a lot of players um, is their go-to. And the main reason being because a lot of uh, people may think, and this is a common misconception that a lot of people ask me about, is there are two different instruments. And that is wrong. The electric guitar and acoustic guitar are the same exact instrument. If you know how to play one, you can play the other. Now the problem is, if you know how to play one, sometimes the other one may be a little more challenging. And in this case, they all have their unique quirks that make them very different from each other and often can have guitar players feeling frustrated, um, especially in the um, learning stages. So now the first guitar I have is obviously the acoustic and the main difference between the acoustic and electric is you would need an amplifier to play an electric and to be able to play it out um, in your own bedroom or wherever you practice. An acoustic can make uh, music really anywhere and that's why a lot of people choose to play it because they can take it uh, to so many different areas, to a campfire, on a trip, and really just practice and jam out. Now, uh, when picking a guitar, I would suggest picking one that best resonates with you. And what that really means is, what kind of music would you want to play? Do you want to play a lot of rock, metal, or do you want to play a lot more smooth music like country, pop, uh, hip hop, that kind of stuff? Then you'd want to choose an acoustic as that best fits it uh, from a tone perspective. Now, physically, the acoustic is a lot larger at times and can be a little uh, hard to re reach around and start playing, and this may seem difficult. Also, the neck radius right here uh, is a lot thicker than the electric at times, which maybe might be a little hard to wrap your hand around when you first pick up the instrument. And a lot of times it can feel a little bit um, hard to play because of the calluses you might get playing the acoustic compared to the electric, which a lot of times the fretboard is a lot smoother and it feels a lot easier to play on the strings than the acoustic. So now I'm going to be talking about the electric guitar. Now the electric guitar is a lot thinner in the neck most of the times. Uh, it obviously depends from which electric you get. Now this Jackson is um, meant as a shredder guitar and it's a lot faster um, with the neck, a lot thinner. And as you can see here, we have a lot of knobs for volume and whatnot. The neck is a lot thinner compared to the acoustic. And also the fretboard, when you first start playing, is a lot softer. So you can play for a longer amount of time without being tired. And this is especially important uh, when you're first learning because you're going to be up with that book, with that, or with this video, figuring out, oh, how should I play each note? Because, and your hands will get very tired. So I would suggest obviously picking up an electric, in my opinion, just because it makes it a little easier on the hands to play in the beginning. However, an acoustic guitar is also a very great option um, as it gives you the flexibility to be able to play wherever you want, whenever you want. So now I want to talk about the second thing, which is how to hold a guitar. Now this may be something that may seem obvious when you first pick it out of the box, but for some of us, it may seem 
a little bit different depending on the guitar we may have. Now the first type of body shape I want to talk about is your standard um, acoustic shape that you would get, um, which is normally it's uh, there will be a cutout here, and really the way to hold this is to have it somewhere in between your um, right thigh and around halfway or possibly closer depending on how you like to play the guitar. Some people like to play the guitar very close to them and they like to play as such. Some people like it a little bit away from them and when you're standing up and playing a lot of times people like to also play it a little lower or a little bit higher close to them. So the way you want to hold it is once again right around halfway to almost a little closer to yourself um, on your right thigh and your right arm is going to come around the body and this little carve here is where your whole rest of your arm is going to kind of fit into like a puzzle piece like this it's just going to kind of rest there and then your left hand is going to be ready to play and your right arm is just going to be resting here coming across the body ready to play with the, the pick in the hand or not finger picking is allowed um, like this so that's for that body shape which is a very common shape in a lot of guitars uh, another shape is the flying v or classical style uh, of playing now the way you want to hold this is not like the other one not horizontally like this because the body is it's very rigid you have a very flat area here which can cause a lot of slipping so what you want to do is take this v part and put it on your thigh like this and this should fit very nicely hopefully and should be comfortable to hold and you're going to bring it pretty close to you as if you have it kind of far away it's it's almost like you're reaching to play the guitar whereas if you bring it a little closer you can um, see across the board if you want to just to know if you're hitting the right notes and also you would be able to see your control volume knobs and whatnot uh, from this area if you're playing a nylon string classical guitar in the way that you hold it is very similar at times a lot of people do like to hold it like this in their lap and as you can see here it's sitting pretty comfortably i have one hand on it and your right arm is going to come around like this and you're going to play okay so now we're going to be talking about picks so right here i have four picks and each of them vary in size and really I want to make sure that you have the pick that's most comfortable for your play style and what you want to be learning in the future so here we're going to start with the thin pick and this pick is made out of plastic it's lesser than 0.7 millimeters it's very um, valuable as you can see uh, it's mainly used for a lot of strumming chord playing the medium pick is what I'd recommend most starting out with because um, you can really grip it and strum with it and play lead so i feel like it is a great balance between the two this pick is a 1.5 millimeter um, my personal preference in picks as i do like to have a little more control while i'm playing and i do not play so much of a rhythm as much as i wish i would but then we also have the three millimeter pick now this pick is very fun to play with as it gives you a ton of control it's it's absolutely absurd how much um different this compares with the 1.5 but in the end um whatever works best for you is uh, what you feel most comfortable with and what you feel best fits your play style. Now, the thin picks are primarily used for a lot of strumming, chords, and rhythm playing. Medium sized picks are almost a hybrid, uh, being able to do both and play lead and rhythm. The thicker picks um, right here are mainly used for a lot of lead playing, solos, jazz, metal, and these are just plastic picks, but there are different materials that you can buy rubber and metal picks for whatever you would best fit your play style now moving on i want to talk about how to exactly hold a pick so uh, everyone holds their picks a little differently um, professional guitar players uh, if you watch them play live sometimes they hold them a little differently than other people may and the great 
thing about this three millimeter pick, the big stubby uh, from Jim Dunlop, is actually it has a little uh, carve out. Um, and you can see right there that it's actually kind of a place where you can put your thumb. Some of the picks have this, or maybe they'll have some grip there. I've, uh, it's a really nice feature for you um, when you're starting out because then you know like exactly where you're going to put your finger. So now the way you want to hold the pick is have the pick in your hand and kind of have it open and re let it rest between these two fingers. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your thumb cover a majority of the pick, but not too much. It's just going to be uh, almost leaving this little sliver to hit the strings with. And you don't want to go too close like this because then you're covering the tip. So you want to have uh, maybe like one, two eighths of the pick ready, like so. You want to hold it in between your index finger and your thumb, and it's going to kind of look like this. You're going to make an O shape, kind of like you're saying OK. And you see that's the, the back side of my hand is very relaxed. You don't want to squeeze too tight like this. You want to just hold it very relaxed, and your wrist is going to do a lot of the work here. Um, as for the thin picks, it's the same thing. You want to hold it in between your index and thumb, just like so, pinch it but have a little bit sticking out to play. And I've seen people also hold their picks like this. Personally, it hasn't worked out too well, but the way I hold the picks are normally like this because I do like to palm you a lot. So I have my palm resting on the bridge and then I, I play like so. Okay, so now I want to talk about guitar tuners. And unfortunately, I do not have a physical tuner with me as my previous tuner has run out of batteries, but I like to use um, the phone as a baseline tuner uh, to be able to find the pitch that I would want to tune my strings to. And the standard tuning that your strings are gonna be tuned to starting from the bottom up is gonna be E, B, G, D, A, E. And that's starting from the first string, which is the highest pitch, which is at the bottom, which is your thin string, the thin one at the bottom. That's where we're gonna start. And really, uh, this is gonna help to understand how we use a tuner, why we use a tuner, and also which way your tuning peg is gonna have uh, the effect on the pitch. So using this guitar tuner on app on my phone, I'm going to play a note on um, the high string, the bottom one, the first string, and you'll see that the pitch right here is fluctuating a little. And on most standard tuners, it's going to have a bar or a series of lights that's going to flash. And the farther you are right or left, that means you're too flat or too sharp. If you're right in the middle and it's green, then that means you are really good to go. And the thing with the app tuners is you are going to get very close to the pitch you want. However, you will oftentimes be slightly off, but it would not be noticeable um, to the naked ear as it's very slightly off. And these tuners do do a decent job of uh, helping to adjust to the correct pitch. And now as far as uh, having the, the guitar itself, As far as having the guitar itself, uh, I'm gonna be using my Jackson as the example. Um, you have the high E string all the way down here. And if you notice, when I play the note, if I tune it so that we're turning it clockwise, the pitch actually goes down. It goes lower. But if we tune it back uh, counterclockwise, the pitch goes up and on your tuner that's going to read as if it's too far to the left that means that it's too flat if it's too far to the right it's too sharp and you'd have to adjust 
So if it's too far to the left, too flat, you'd want to tune it up in pitch. If it's too far to the right, too sharp, you want to tune it down a little. And that's how you're going to get the tuning for your guitar. And there are different types of headstocks where this, um, where you're going to start tuning. This one is lined up so that the lowest string is right here and the highest string is right here. So this is the highest pitch going and it goes lower as it goes up. Now, those types of headstocks are very common in the guitars you might encounter, but let me show you another type of headstock that you might come across. Another type of common setup is the three on one side, three on the other. And in this case, it's going to be a little more confusing when first looking at it as which uh, peg is the highest and which is the lowest. So when we start on the right, this is our high string, second highest, third highest, and then this is our fourth highest uh, pitch, and this is the low string. So while tuning, if we go here, it works the same exact way uh, with the counterclockwise and clockwise movements um, for the pitch. And we're going to be essentially tuning it the same way on standard tuning, E, B, G, D, A, and E on your tuners um, to begin playing. So now I want to talk about storage and best ways to care for your guitar. So on my right here, we have the stand. And this is a great way to store your guitar in your room or in uh, your practice space. And it is uh, fairly affordable at around, I believe, 10 to $15. There could be cheaper stands out there. Um, I picked this up at Guitar Center and it's worked great for me so far. Nice little way to keep your guitar also on display. And it's a nice reminder just saying like, Hey, you need to practice me. Another way is right behind me is to have it on a fretrest like so. Um, this is a nice, also a nice way to display your instrument, and it looks really nice in a room. It is also can be at times a little bit scary um, pertaining to the guitar possibly falling but that has not happened to me in my three years of having this set up so I I really highly doubt that that's an issue but it looks really aesthetically pleasing to have your instrument hanging like so and the last way that you could store your guitar in a very safe way is to invest in a case. And hard shell cases are normally on the pricier side, ranging um, from around $50 to $100 or plus, depending on the case. Um, but I would suggest if you're doing a lot of traveling around, moving around, invest in a nice hard shell case that comes with locks for security or you could invest in a gig bag, which is a softer material and it's obviously more affordable as the materials being used are meant to keep a lot of dust out and have your guitar stay in tune. And this case, the hard shell case is mainly used for um, if you're going on trips a lot, airplane, and having it being with other things that might push it around. And I want to also talk about maintaining your the cleanliness of your guitar. Uh, guitar strings, depending on how often you play, you'd want to change around every month, I'd say. Um, so they keep the strings very fresh and they can last. Their tone would change in that time. Another thing is you want to keep your guitar very clean. If there's any dust anywhere, you want to be able to clean it. And personally, I use Q-tips to be able to clean my guitars in the little nooks and crannies. And there's a guitar cleaning kit I'd suggest buying on Amazon. I'm going to put a picture right here. Um, it's the Jim Dunlop cleaning set. I find it works really well and helps to really clean the guitar and make it feel as if it was brand new. Now that we're at the end of the video, I just want to say thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to click on this video and support my channel. And hopefully um, I either inspired you to possibly pick a guitar up and start learning or this was your first video that you could 
can see how to take care of guitar, hold a guitar, hold a pick, use a tuner, and learn the basic necessities to be able to prosper in the near future. Now, what we can be looking forward to in the upcoming videos are tutorials on learning the first notes on the first string and possible chord shapes that you could put under your belt to show off and show other people what you've learned and share your joy of music with them. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of the video, what I can work on, because I'm always open, looking for feedback. And also, remember to follow the Instagram at musicwmotive for daily updates and content over there. Thank you so much.